Welcome to the Electrify Latina channel. I'm at the BMX park learning to do bunny hops on my new magnificent electric mountain bike. I hope you enjoy this thrilling review. Whew. This is a monster fat tire mountain electric bike, the Fucare Taurus. It has massive 26 inch by four inch wide tires they're very knobby it comes with a 750 watt motor that peaks at 1400 watts it is so solid it has a payload capacity of 400 pounds hydraulic disc brakes and a massive 48 volt 25 amper hour battery this is an e-bike built for rugged landscapes as you see behind me it's perfect for this e-bike Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am the Electrify Latina and today I'm going to be reviewing the incredible Fucare Taurus. Now, if you've been watching my channel, I have reviewed the Scorpio, the Fucare Scorpio, and it is an incredible e-bike. And the Taurus has a very similar frame with the exposed tubing that makes them extremely solid. The Taurus has a similar award-winning design frame as the Scorpio, with what Fouquier calls a stability triangle resilience with 100,000 vibration tests, setting new standards for strength and safety. I absolutely love the look of the frame with its exposed tubing, and at the same time, it's cradle between these two tubes protecting it. As you can see right here, it's protected by the tubes, this battery. Also, it comes with plastic fenders, front and back, and it doesn't come with a rear rack because Fucare was trying to keep the weight down as a mountain bike, but it does have the spots to buy separately if you needed that rear rack for commuting. Okay, so at the time of making this video, the bike is $13.99, but this probably won't stay at this price for long because all the prices will be shooting up due to the tariff 301 to all e-bikes coming from China. If you're interested in buying this e-bike, please use my affiliate link below. This e-bike comes in three different colors. As you can see, I have the graphite gray. It also comes in forest green and it comes in nebula purple. Now, I really wish I would have gotten the Nebula Purple. It looks beautiful, and Fouquet knows how to do their paint colors. It's tremendous. And, you know, they're a lot more lively, and I like bikes like that. This is pretty muted, but the paint is very well done. It's very smooth. I like the little touches here of black, white, and their little logo. Very nice. And then let me give you the walk around from the rear to the front. So for tires, we have Innova, 26 inch by four inch tires. They're really nice and rugged and they're grippy, like that. Then over here, we have Shimano H gears. This is a very nice choice for a mountain bike. Also e-bikes in this price range and even higher, they usually only give us seven gears, so well done. For derailleur, we have a Shimano Altus and I'm very excited to see this because the Scorpio came to me with a Cherny, which is the lowest level of derailleurs. And I am not crazy about that. So thank you for care for listening. Then uh, we have a pro wheel chain ring. So this is a 52 tooth, nice and big. I haven't felt any ghost pedaling at high speeds. Excellent. 
and then we don't have a double sided guard here which i do like to see so the chain doesn't fall off it hasn't fallen on me then for pedals we have guinea metal pedals and they're actually really grippy another good choice for mountain biking and then for brakes we have dy island hydraulic brakes with 180 millimeter rotors i am not crazy about these brakes at all i've tried them in other e-bikes there are just better brakes out there and then the saddle this is a fuker branded that looks and feels really good it's nice and wide and it's a good um <laughs> it's a good shape for pedaling okay fuker says this e-bike will fit riders anywhere from five four to six seven and this is because their saddle can go all the way down to 34 inches it's nice and low and all the way up look at the length of the seat post to uh, 49 inches okay and okay so this e-bike weighs 80 pounds it has an impressive payload capacity of 400 pounds i am 5'11 with a 32 inch inseam and this is how it fits me i can throw a leg over the frame right there i'll put up on the screen what's the standover height there and then right there this is a perfect height for good pedaling position good leg extension right there so guys i'm going to be reviewing this e-bike for you i'm going to be putting it through its paces like we'll do in this channel to see if this e-bike is right for you first impressions on the fukaru scorpio all right guys so this bike is a big bike okay it's 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 tall it's not as tall as some other 26 inch tires but it's also very wide because it's so biffy and uh it feels comfortable i really like the saddle just don't be expecting something super plush like cloud nine seats but it's a good pedaling saddle and i can see me like riding long distances with it okay then um, the grip so these are rounded very grippy grips that feel good on your hands i mean of course i have gloves but they do and now they they're feeling i'm used to now the uh the the wider grips that have the ergonomic shape i think i prefer those now but this are this are great for mountain biking um then the the, the tubes are so wide that sometimes like the inside of your legs do rub up against the frame but it's not enough to be uncomfortable okay and then what else it feels actually feels like a really powerful bike so it has a 750 watt motor it peaks at 1400 watts so yeah it feels like it has plenty of power okay so oh the riding position so this handlebars they are flat that like like a mountain bike handlebar so you're pretty bent over over the frame like this but they do that mountain bikes for for better control okay now the other thing that i'm noticing too oh and they're very wide they're very wide like perfect for mountain bikes it feels like such a solid stable strong frame i really really like it like I said, the pedals are very grippy. Um, I've been riding on plastic pedals lately and they are slippery. They're not the best for pedaling, but these ones are great, okay? Um, now, something that I'm noticing that I don't like at all is the, the lag in the power with pedaling. With the throttle, it's immediate and we're gonna be doing some tests, but I mean, sadly, between the Fuker Scorpio that I've done a lot of videos with and this one, the lag is atrocious. Um, I'll go more into detail on our tests. Now, that, let me show you the suspension, okay? So front suspension, and John, show them the suspension. I'm gonna do the bouncing test. Woo, woo, woo. Feels really nice, really, really nice. Fuker really knows how to do their, their suspensions. So at least the front one is super plush nothing is vibrating nothing rattles just a quality e-bike acceleration test 0 to 20 throttle only chronometer 1 to 3 go 
Woo! <laughs> Crouching down. 10, 11, 14, 15, 17, 18, 20. Woo! This is the hill test. Throttle only. It's really narrow, bumpy, and steep here. Oh. Come on, come on, come on. Fuke. You can do it. Woo. It's doing it. Let's help it a little bit here. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> it barely made it. It had a hard time going up, I'm not gonna lie. I had to help it a little bit with pedaling. It's a heavy bike. Now let's go down and let's check the brakes too. It's pretty steep here. All right. Woo. Yeah, feels pretty good actually. Going down, good control in this narrow path. Good brakes. Okay. Woo. Bringing us successfully all the way down. This is the brake test. Woo. Let's see, 20 miles an hour, 22 and break. <laughs> that was actually really good stopping power. It took a little bit more to come to a full stop than I like, but it was still pretty good. So these are the DY Island hydraulic brakes with 180 millimeter rotors. That's pretty good guys this is the end of part one of this video because look we totally got rained out and as we got home it's just starting to hail so oh this is turning into a really exciting review i'll be making part two for you guys tomorrow when it's not raining or hailing outside welcome back to part two of the review video of the fukara taros I'm actually glad we're doing this review video in two days because while I was at home, I watched some videos and I figured out how to change some settings on this bike. So I was able to unlock the top speed from 28 miles an hour to 34 miles an hour. And in, as, as you remember in part one, I was telling you about, I was complaining about the horrific delay in power on pedal assist. Well, there's a setting, thank you to my viewer and friend, Robert Broken, who's been a, uh, a viewer from my, from my channel for a very long time. He told me how to make the pedal assist more sensitive and it's making all the difference in the world. I will put it up on the screen so you can unlock yours and so that you can have a smooth ride with the power engaging right away instead of being so jerky herky, okay? So we're going to do another reactivity test with this change. Me voy atrás de ti, With this change, okay? So I'm going to slow down and I'm going to do throttle first. I'm thinking this is just for pedal assist, but okay. One, two, three, throttle. Yeah, the throttle is the same. It's like a second, half a second to a second delay. One, two, three, go like a second delay on the throttle but let's do the pedal assist okay one two three and well let's let the car go by and pedal oh my god guys it is night and day okay i'm going to do it one more time one two three and pedal i mean it's like a second one two three pedal it's like a second to two seconds, but how it was before, it was a four second delay, which was horrible. But now you can pedal long distances and it's really smooth. There is no jerking around. So, oh, thank you. This is the top speed run. I have this e-bike unlocked. I will put it up on the screen. You have to get into the display so that you can go faster than 28 miles an hour. All right, guys, so I have a full battery. Let me put it up to speed mode five. There we go. One, two, three, and go. Woo! <laughs> I'm hoping we can get it over 30 miles an hour, guys. Wow, it's already 28. No ghost pedaling, 31. Woo! 32! 
<laughs> Holy cow, what? 33 miles an hour. Oh my God. 34. Holy. <laughs> Mine oh, it's 34 high too, guys. Oh my God, now the, we're starting on a little bit of an uphill right here. Holy cow. I never thought this bike was gonna get to 34. And Fouquet, they have the gearing tuned perfectly, perfectly for high speeds. And the Shimano derailleur, the Altus, works perfect. It's crisp, no skipping of gears, excellent. And I'm testing it to see also how it handles at high speeds. Nothing moves, guys. Nothing rattles. Nothing shakes. If I had the ability, I could take my hands off the, the handle and this bike would go straight. It's so solid. It feels like a monster at high speed. You know, having the double tubular frame, that width that you get, it's what allows for it to be so stable. It's more stable than single tubular bike frames. So, oh yeah, I would feel comfortable going really hard on this bike all day long, guys. It, wow, it rocks. Oh, and even at 34 miles an hour, I, like, I was giving it a lot of input. I was on, on Speed Gear 7, and it was feeling hard, so wow, love it. Now let me tell you about the electrical components, the motor. It's a Shen G rear hub motor, 750 watts, but it peaks at 1400 watts. It has 85 newton meters of torque. Now the controller, this is a uh, Luishi, 25 amps, and it's located right here, very nice, in this metal box, okay? so. Now, for the battery, this is a massive Samsung battery, 48 volt, 25 ampere hours for 1200 watt hours of range, and Fukade estimates a range anywhere from 40 to 90 miles. Okay, and then let me show you the front suspension. This is a Fukare branded suspension with a pretty large travel of 120 millimeters. And for knobs, we have a lockout adjustment right there and a preload adjustment on this side. Then on the front, we have this pretty nice and large headlight and I like the shape of it. And it's pretty bright too. Then over here, we have attachments for a front basket and the really nice Fukare logo. It's super cool. And on the back for your integrated lights too, we have this really nice light right there, which I love how it looks and it's integrated, but like with the Scorpio, Fukare only puts it on the right side, which does not make any sense. Like, if you were to pick a side, well, it would have to be on the left and better to have it on both. So hopefully that will change. And then finally, we have the saddle here, which is Fouquet branded, feels pretty good. It's perfect for off-roading. Now, let me show you the cockpit. Okay, so handlebars, as you can see, they are wide and flat. There is no race to them. So this is gonna give you a, just a more aggressive riding for off-roading, okay? so. To the left, we have some rounded grips that feel really good and grippy to the touch. Then we have this push left thumb throttle. I've never had something like this. I don't like thumb throttle, so yeah, I would change it to a twist throttle for me. And it's in a pedal, paddle shape, okay? And you push it to the left instead of down like the other ones. So then we have your control cluster right here. Then we have a bell. Then we have your, well, your really nice color display right there. And then to the right, of course, we have your rounded grips right there. And then we have your Shimano eight speeds right there. And then your paddle shifters, these are your trigger shifters. They're really crisp. And then of course your DY Island hydraulic brake levers right there. 
And then let me show you the bisplit. Unfortunately, it's really low light. You, you can't even see it. It's, I'll put a picture up on the screen, but yeah, I didn't see. I watched the, um, a video on how to do the settings on the display, but there was nothing to do for brightness. So I'm going to ask the company, but it's actually really nice. But as I have it, it's even hard for me to see while riding, but it is a color display and it's pretty nice and customizable. Now, let me show you the lights, okay? So look at that front headlight and we're in, the, in plain sunlight, so super nice and bright. And then now let me show you the brightness on the one on the back. This also acts as a brake light. See, it blinks when I press the brake light. Let's go off-roading, woo! This is a BMX park. I just discovered, and for now, it's above my pay grade, meaning beyond my capabilities. But I'm not scared. I'm just super excited to be checking out the capabilities for off-roading on the Taurus. So I did lower my seat in case I lose my balance and need to throw a leg down. The front suspension is all the way open and it has a lot of travel and it's so plush and it works so well. It's just like with my Scorpio, it's like really plush. You know, and I have to say, the comfort is added by the massive 26 inch by four inch tires. It makes for a nice quality ride. Although for this type of terrain, I wish it had a rear suspension just like the Scorpio. The bike handles really well, I have to say. It corners well. I'm just a little bit lost inside this maze of trails. It has an incredibly nimble handling for its size. You know, I have to say it's very responsive and manageable for my 150 pound body. The bigger saddle feels great. I only wish it had a dropper seat post for what I'm doing right now. Ah, I'm stuck on this incline and it's because I'm riding slow so I don't trip over the obstacles and then suddenly I'll hit a hill and I just don't have enough momentum or a chance to gain some speed before getting to it. Come on Taros, you can do it! I'm on pass two because I'm scared of getting too much power in this technical terrain. I don't know if you've seen some of the ramps to jump over, like over here on the side. Of course I can't do that yet. You know, I'm sure the frame of the Taurus could handle some big jumps, but I don't know if the rims or suspension could handle it. Although the rims are double walled rims. Okay, so a little bit of a downhill here some fun bunny hops, flats. Brakes are feeling great and doing a great job at stopping this heavy 80 pound bike. Now I have a last deep hill to get to the end of it. There's lots of sand, rocks, and some gravel. But the no Novi Innova tires are doing a great job about clawing onto the terrain and I haven't slid once. The more I'm approaching the end, the stiffer the hill gets. Ah, rocks and more rocks. But come on, Taurus, I have a huge ramp to go over. Pedal, pedal, pedal. Oh my God, the Taurus, you made it. Woo! Now, to finish this very exciting circuit, I'm going to do my favorite part. I've been doing this a million times today because it's so much fun and every time I do it, I mean, it's probably like, I don't know, six, seven times. Every time I do it, the better I get and the more confident I get. And you're gonna see me even catching some air. So at the end of the circuit, I'm gonna go up a 20 degree grade incline. It's really tough, but I'll leave you to it. Enjoy. Whew.
this is a hill test, but some ramps to get to it. This is so much fun. <laughs> Bunny hops here. Woo! And then put a, let me put it on pedal assist five. This is a 20, 20 grade incline, guys. It's really steep at the top. Woo! Oh my God! <laughs> Woo! So it had a hard time at the last part, which gets like a little bit over 20, 20 degree grade, but with a little bit of, well, a lot of pedal power, it was able to get up. Woo! So who is this bike for? Anyone who wants a long range e-bike, you can get around 60 miles of range without even trying. This is an e-bike that's great for off-roading. It's comfortable, it's powerful, it is super sturdy. I love the very unique award-winning design frame. It is so robust. Like I was saying, it does feel even more stable than single tube bikes. The brakes are great. The display is nice. I mean, there are so many things I like about this bike. You can also use it for commuting because you have the front bosses for a front basket. You can also add for an extra price, you can also add a rear rack and a basket, take it anywhere. So guys, this bike is going for $13.99, but I have a discount code that I will leave down in the description below for an additional $50. So it goes down to $13.50, which is an incredible deal. If you're interested, I would buy it now because Tariff 301 just came into effect, which is bikes that are imported from China into the United States are going to be incurring a 25% increase. And June 15th is today. So anytime, all the e-bikes that you're interested in are gonna go up in price. Guys, thank you so much for coming along to another one of my videos. I will be seeing you tomorrow. Always remember, whatever you're doing, happy riding! Stay safe! Bye.